Hello and welcome everyone to yet another deck preview for VEB01, which is the Destructive Roar. Today we're going to be taking a look at none other than Tachikaze. So this is a clan that's been heavily requested, I know a lot of you are excited about it. I was initially the most excited about this from the three clans because it looked like a lot of fun and it was a lot of frustrations at first. For those of you that watch my stream, you saw a lot of the times where I bricked with the deck and it just didn't want to work with me. I felt like I had an optimal build and I just kept bricking and bricking and bricking. But after I finished streaming uh, some few days ago, I sat down with the deck and I was like, you know what, I need to properly sit down and understand how it works and try to do the most that I can with it and then it started to run a bit better and so I made a few changes and this is the final build that we ended up at. So we're going to go over it today, hopefully give a little bit of an impression of what the deck does to you folks as well as a game later on. The game's going to be pretty long though, I think even with my little speed up it's still going to be at least 10 minutes so I hope you do enjoy that but it shows off a lot of the stuff that the deck can do so I think it's quite important to see the game afterwards as well. So. It is an Axel clan, so you do have to run the Axel markers, optimally 8 to 9 because of our grade 3s. But speaking of the grade 3s, let's go over our main one, which is Gigarex. So its first skill is when it attacks, whether it's attacking the Vanguard or Rearguard doesn't matter, you put up to one card from the top of your deck face down as an equip gauge for each of your rearguards. This unit gets plus 5k until end of that battle for each of your rearguards. And then its second skill is an act on Vanguard Circle. Cost, you may discard 5 Equip Gauge, and then 3 of your front row rearguards get plus 5k until end of turn, and if your opponent's damage zone has 4 or less cards, you also deal 1 damage to your opponent's vanguard. So, he is quite good, obviously, but the most important part, which I think some people might be slightly kind of rushing to uh, conclusions, is that actually it's his first skill. His first skill is the enabler of the whole deck. It's what makes the whole deck turn, it's what makes all your combos go, and that's what makes it really amazing. So, you really do need to ride into him. That's why I said bricking and riding to any, into any of your other great threes hurts a lot. So, you really do need to ride into him. He enables your entire deck, entire combos, everything, and so it's really crucial. So, Keep in mind that he is the enabler, you don't want to aim for a second skill, but you still want to use it sometimes if it comes to that. But overall, just go with that first skill, he makes himself big for no reason. And you can choose one of the little ruling things, I think W Slash's video talks about this a bit better, is that you put 0 to 1 gauge for each rearguard. So, let's say we have 5 units on your field, and then you go first unit, 0 to 1, 1, okay put 1 there. Second unit, 0 to 1, you want 0, put 0 there. So for each unit, you can put either 0 or 1. And so that way you don't have to like put every single gauge to every single unit, because that way you might deck yourself out too fast, so you can pick and choose who you give the gauge to. Moving along to our second grade 3, however, is Deathrex. So Deathrex is your other grade 3, but he really doesn't do as much on Vanguard Circle as Gigarex does. So he does have Axel if you do right into him, and his Vanguard and Rearguard skill is... When he attacks the vanguard specifically, you can soul blast one and retire one of your other rearguards, and then you also retire one of your opponent's rearguards in the front row. And then for each of the gauge of the rearguard that you retired for his cost, he gets plus 10k. So if you retire a rearguard that had 3 gauge, then he gets plus 30k. If you retire a rearguard that had 5 gauge, he gets plus 50k. So he's really good because it doesn't cost you counter blast, he only costs soul. He's also basically a massive attacker because you can really finish games really easily with him, and he also retires and he's... You basically only retire in the whole deck, but it's a really consistent way of retiring your opponent's units. You know, unless you're playing against OTT and they set up double Promise Daughter, but otherwise you're going to be getting rid of some pesky targets and that's going to make him really good. But again, if you ride into him, you're just not going to be able to have enough soul throughout the game to be able to use his skill repetitively. So having him on rear guard helps because that way you can build up soul in other ways. And then finally we play one Savage King. I tried two for some time, but I think one is fine because you get him and he's just a win more card, but if you don't get him, it's not like you're gonna lose either. So he does have the Axel marker as well. And he has two skills, first one of which is on rear guard circle. During your turn for each gauge that he has, he he gets plus 5k power. So he can be a massive beat stick if he wants to. And his second skill is when he attacks the Vanguard, you can take all of the gauge from one of your other units onto him. So that way you can kind of attack in different patterns and that way absorb all the gauge onto him and then maybe attack with Deathrex after that and sack him to get like, you know, five gauge off of him and attack with 62 and that's gonna be really strong. So you're gonna get two really big attacks off consecutively and it doesn't end there because we have even more cards that can lead to big attacks. So this is is Megarex, who has a Vanguard and Rearguard skill. When he attacks the Vanguard, you can retire one of your other Rearguards, and then you draw one. 
And then if he's on the rear guard circle, you can also counter blast one, and then put the top card of your deck as a gauge under him, and then for each gauge that he has, he gets plus 5k until the end of that battle. So this is really, really nice. And also, for those of you that don't know, when you put a gauge under something, you basically take the top card of your deck, and you just kind of slide it under that unit, and then, you know, you just have it under like that. So you're going to see in the game that we play later on, uh, what the gauge actually looks like, but it's fairly simple to understand and so he's really good because again Just having like four gauge on him or even two gauge leads him to attack for 19 And that's a very nice, you know attack to go with because it can hit anything for uh, you know At least 10k shield and then you also get extra cards in hand and the thing is that you know Sure, you're retiring a unit to get an extra card in hand But those units that retire might also lead to some kind of effect that either get two cards in hand or something else So that makes it very nice and he's definitely a very good card that you want to play as a four of of course we do have our starter that i probably should have mentioned earlier which is dragon egg same skill as always when you're right on top of it draw one and then our second grade two is blytops his skill is very simple when he's retired from the rear guard circle you can count almost one to take up to two of the gauges of him so Basically, when he gets retired and you have two gauge on him, you can count almost one and take both of them to hand. Even if you have one, you can count almost one and take the one. If you have three, then you have to choose two out of those three. And the best thing about this guy is that he doesn't have to be retired during your turn or retired by a skill. So if your opponent attacks him and retires him due to an attack, then he will also be able to use the skill because he was retired from rear guard circle. So that makes him really, really nice because then your opponent doesn't really want to attack him and they just give you more damage and that way you're able to do more of your plays because you've got a quite a few things here and there that cost counter blast so it's definitely quite nice and then i play three savage raider and now i used to i played four and i played none but i think three is actually a really nice number because he has a couple of good skills so his first skill is when you call him from hand you can choose one of your other rear guards and from you can put a gauge from the top of your deck to that unit so he basically supplies you with gauge and it's very nice because you can put it to any other unit so he can't put it on himself so do make sure it does say hokano unito uh hokano riagado so other rear guard so that is an important part and then his second skill is when he attacks the vanguard you can choose one of your units and then take all of the gauge from that unit onto another unit so kind of similar as savage king he kind of transfers the gauge around and that lets you manipulate the uh, amount of power they have on some units like you can give more gauge to mega rex to give him more power more gauge to savage king but he's going to get more gauge anyway from attacking and you can put gauge onto something that you're going to retire with death rex and that way you're going to get more power in death rex so there's a lot of ways that this deck interacts and that makes it very interesting so that this card is definitely quite good at first it was part of the reason why i was losing a lot so i wasn't a big fan but now i finally understand sort of its main use and i think it's actually quite good moving on to read ones we have for sonic noah he has a very important skill that when he boosts a rear guard you take a card from the top of your deck and put it as a gauge to the boosted unit so the unit that's in front will get the gauge and then his second skill is also really nice on vanguard and rearguard circle whether it's the attack or the boost when the attack hits a vanguard you can retire one of your other rearguards to draw one so this is really good because you can for example retire the blight tops to draw one use blight top skill to get another two cards in hand and you just got three cards in hand for a counter blast basically and retiring one of your own units that triggers and a skill so definitely very nice and this lets you boost let's say like the sonic noah with the blight tops to put the second gauge to him for example or put gauge onto any of your other units that like to have gauge on them so definitely a super good card Moving on, we have four lesser attacks. So his first skill is when you call him from hand, you take the top card of your deck and put it as a gauge under him. And then his second skill is when he's retired from the rear guard circle, you can soul blast one to take one gauge from under him into your hand. So basically the same as Blytop, but for a soul blast and only takes one card, but that makes him still quite good because you can call him down turn one if you're going second, attack with something else and then attack with him. And then even if your opponent does retire him, you get yourself a card in hand and you will have a soul by then. So that's definitely very, good next is for skype terra some people weren't too happy with him but i think he's very good because he lets you do some really greedy early game plays so when he's retired from your rear guard circle during your turn you can count almost one to return him to hand so the important part of the skill is that it's during your turn so that you cannot like if your opponent attacks it then it's just going to go to the drop zone but if you retire it with your own skill then you can bring it back to hand so for example you can go turn two right into mega rex 
and then uh, first attack with the Skypterra, then attack with the Mega Rex, retire the Skypterra, Skypterra goes back to hand, Mega Rex lets you draw an extra card, and that way you just basically got yourself an extra card just for one, well, one counter blast because you have to ride the Mega Rex in that case. So it's a good card. Some people weren't that happy with it, so they play more counts of Beam Terra, but I think Beam Terra is fine as a little tricky one of, but maybe I would cut down Skypterra to three to play a second uh, Beam Terra, just because Beam Terra is actually quite nice too, but I only have space for one as a little bit of a surprise. Prize. So his skill is, during your turn when he's retired from the rearguard circle, for that turn you can choose 3 of your units and give them plus 3000 power. This is actually quite nice because you can attack with your uh, Giga Rex and then, you know, attack with something that retires, like whether it's a Mega Rex or something, and then retire the Beam Terra. And then you're going to turn this into a 12k or 22k, whichever attacker. You can turn, you know, all, all your grade 2s into 12k attackers, which is nice against the popular Protect clans right now. And so I think that makes him really, really, really nice. And then our final cards are going to be the triggers, and I've opted to go for an 8 crit, 4 draw, 4 heal lineup, which I think right now is pretty optimal. Uh, I think another lineup you could do is 6 crit, 6 draw, but I wasn't struggling with hand that much uh, while I was testing this build, so I think 8 crit is actually quite fine. With fronts, I tried a laddering build, which is basically 2 fronts, uh, 6 crits, 4 draws, so 2 fronts, 4 draws, uh, 6 crits like a ladder sort of thing, but honestly the fronts just take away from the way you want to be playing your game. So I think honestly you either go full fronts or you go full crits and I think in Tachikaze it's much better to go full crits because you already have massive numbers, you have massive vanguard, massive rear guards over here as well and it's really not that hard to turn them into massive numbers and so I think I don't need, you. I don't think you need the extra boost from the fronts, you need the crit pressure however to make those big numbers into a threat because otherwise Otherwise, they won't be doing that much and you really need to turn them into a into a threat and that you know running eight crits is exactly what does that now before we go into the game just a couple of things obviously we already talked about the fronts but another unit that I think some people are interested in that I don't play is the attempt mammoth he basically has the battle door skill that when he attacks during that battle when your opponent guards from their hand they have to guard with two cards simultaneously or they can't guard at all so it's basically the battle door skill I liked him at first but then I realized that he's a little bit too risky sometimes because of his second skill where at the end of the battle they attacked you have to remove a gauge from him and if you can't then you have to retire him so that's a bit risky because you're losing a unit which you normally wouldn't unless you retire him so i think in in the sense of the early game where you want to be a bit more flexible he's just not as good and that made me drop him pretty fast and i put um savage raider back in instead so this is the build i hope that i've explained it in enough uh detail for now but now we're gonna go into the actual game and talk about it even more as we go through it getting into the match we're actually gonna have a mirror match here and as you can see my opening hand was actually quite poor but right now we're gonna be starting off with a little bit of a great stuck but I did fix it with the first ride going into the Skype Tarot and thus giving you a overall hopefully normal game. So going through the first few trigger checks, disabling the UI just to make it look a bit better. A bit of a slow early game. Uh, I, in another game that I recorded I was able to really show off the early game that you can do with Hachikaze but actually my opponent is going to be able to do just that where he actually rides into the Mega Rex and he's able to call a bunch of units and then use the retire skills to actually plus quite a bit so we see the sonic noah the savage raider as well as the blight tops as well he gets an extra grid gauge on the blight tops now having two on it and i let this hit which allows him to use the sonic noah to retire the blight tops and then use the blight top skill to get the two cards into his hand and the sonic noah because it hit lets him draw an additional card too i let the savage hit as well and then let him attack with a vanguard for no pass and thus keeping myself at three damage I ride into the Giga Rex, getting myself the Axle Circle, calling up my, uh, well, dropping one of my cards a little bit, but calling out my uh, attackers, putting gauges on all of them, and as I mentioned earlier, this is how you put the gauges. The ruling is that you first need to apply the gauges, and only after you apply them you can look at what they are, so as you saw, I quickly looked through what the three of them are. So this uh, will be his swinging for 22, because I did give the gauge there. I activate the Mega Rex skill to uh, retire him, to draw one, as well as get another gauge 
rage on him attacking for a total of 29 and then with my last uh attack i will i'm debating if i should be using the skill because i don't have anything to retire so i'm just going to attack him for the 12 I'm not going to use the skill to retire my mega rex because i just want to keep him there potentially a target for my opponent but if he doesn't get rid of it then in that case i'm actually going to have a very threatening attacker for next turn as well as you can see he sets up a really threatening board with double mega rex the bly tops and the two sonic noahs in the back currently he as he attacks the vanguard he's applying all of the gauges to every single unit and then gets the twin drive of the savage raider and the giga rex as well thus not being the most uh, eventful drive check i suppose but attacks with the blight tops from sonic noah's skill gets another gauge the sonic noah hits and he's gonna plus a lot here he got an extra draw from the sonic noah he got an extra two cards in hand from the blight tops so this really shows how much this deck despite being an axle deck can actually generate advantage and it's actually quite ridiculous now one of the good points is that here in able to, in order for him to use his mega rex skill he needs to attack the vanguard so he either has to not use it and attack my rear which he does or he would have had to give me more damage and then you know i would be able to uh leave my attackers where they are so i protect against the first one and he's still debating on where he's gonna put the other one that he has because you know that's still a 19k attack if I'm not mistaken, potentially more if he goes against the Vanguard, but we'll see what he decides to do. He does go to the Vanguard so that he can retire the Sonic Noah and, and draw himself an extra card and make this attack a little bit bigger. And I tell him that that skill is on Vanguard only, so quickly just correcting it there. So he does hit me for the fourth damage. And now, you know, my field is sort of okay. It's nowhere near as strong as his. I attack with my Vanguard to put some gauges on my units. I give one to the Mega Rex, one to the Blight Tops, and one to the uh, Skype Terra. I'll give myself a crit putting in on the Blight Tops, as well as another Blight Tops in hand. And now here, no real special skills go off, but I'm just attacking him uh, to the Vanguard to be able to push out for a little bit of damage here but he does have to drop the shield and that is enough here i use the mega rex skill to uh retire my skype tarot get the skype tarot back to my hand by counter busting one and now this mega rex is actually huge in terms of power so i think it was wise for me to push him to five damage because this way i'm able to really pressure his hand this turn and thus he's really not able to well he's gonna have less reach over his combos next turn because of how much i've managed to uh, strip away his hand so now attacking with a death rex he does perfect guarded but I can still retire one of his front row units despite that. So as you can see, I had a heal as one of my gauges too, which does hurt a little bit. That's one of the bad parts of this deck actually, is that because you randomly uh, get the gauges to your units and you don't always get them to hand, sometimes, read really often, uh, you actually get a lot of your triggers as gauges and then it kind of hurts because especially if you can't add them to hand, then it's not just wasted triggers, but it's also wasted, you know, prime shield value. So it is a bit of a shame, but going on now to my opponent's turn he is gonna once again equip all the gauges to his units just checking how many counts of each gauge he has because this is actually a really scary field because his vanguard is getting a plus 5k for every rear guard that he has so an extra plus 25k buff he's already gotten quite a lot of units on the board as well so you know this is going to be quite scary and i think with my hand i should be able to defend against it i think the fact that i used skyptero's skill to bring him back to hand was quite important last turn because that extra tanky shield will actually help me quite a bit he did attack that two rear though because you know my rears are pretty annoying in the sense that they will only scale up in power so now i do have my last um uh Bly tops here on the field which does have a savage raider in uh the gauge so if he does attack into it i can easily get that into my hand thus making another attacker for next turn so I decided to take that even though it's a pretty small attack and it also lets him pop the Sonic Noah which I think in the end was a pretty bad choice because that's an extra three cards in his hand so I think that was honestly not the best choice I could have probably guarded that and taken one of the other attacks because in this sense I wasn't really able to deny his uh, advantages which I easily could have so I think it was a bit of a bad play on my side but in the end the difference that it makes is one extra card and here you can see that he is going quite aggressive on my Vanguard I do have the heal as well as the extra 10k to protect myself and I think it's just enough for that attack and now he's able to soul bust once again and retire the uh, mega rex to uh, get this you know this attack was like over 60k I think because of how many stacks he had under the mega rex but I kept the perfect guard just for that reason and here we have my final hand basically I put the extra gauge from savage raider into my blight tops and here I'm gonna have a sonic noah that I'm gonna drop behind the blight tops that you know I can still add cards to my hand but here I'm going to put Gage on basically everything because I want to move it around with the Savage Raider to make sure that my Mega Rex is hitting for as much as possible so I can close out this game. Because he has about 7 cards in hand and normally, you know, I, I wouldn't be too sure if I can close this out or not because 
you know, with seven cards in hand, there's a high chance he could have a bunch of PGs, but he has to one to pass it, and I get the Mega Rex, as, and actually don't get any other um, triggers. So I'm a bit worried here. You know, if he one to pass it, does that mean that that's it for me? But I think you know, if I'm able to move around my gauges easily and you know, carefully enough, I might be able to just clutch it out, even though he one to pass it. You know, when your opponent one to pass, you get that feeling of like, okay, that means they can guard everything else. But in this case. I'm now thinking with my Savage Raider, I had this thought where like, oh I want to leave 2 gauge on the Blytops, but then I was like, no wait, I'm going to die next turn anyway, so I want to put all the gauge from Blytops actually under the Mega Rex, because that way I can push out for as much power as possible, and right now what I need to do is win this game, and so it's really important for me to do just that, and so here I'm going to be retiring one of my units, which is going to be the Blytops, to activate uh, Mega Rex's skill to draw one and get an extra gauge, putting up a plus 25k boost, and that is going to be game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this deck preview for the new Tachikaze in Standard. I think it's a very unique deck that has a lot more interaction and decision trees than a lot of the other Standard decks, so it's really overall fun to play. I know a lot of people that watch my streams know that my experience initially was quite frustrating, so I want to hear what your experience is, if you already play the deck, what they are, or if you're watching this later, what your experiences with the deck are overall, because it's been sort of a half-half for me, where it's been like sort of half frustrations, half really fun, so I want to hear what you guys think of it as well, but I hope you guys enjoyed it I know equip gauge is a new mechanic, but I hope you don't find it too uh, Confusing I think the general rulings are just that you put the top gate top card of your deck as the gauge under the re Specified rear guard and then any gauge that when the unit is retired any of the gauge normally goes to the drop zone Unless specified by a skill where it would go somewhere else like your hands So I hope it's not too confusing because I didn't really go over it in super depth uh, in this video But if you have any questions, you can always ask them in the comments, but that's gonna be it for me today Don't forget to click the bell button as well as check out the social medias in the description and join the discord channel if you haven't already But on that note that's gonna be it for me today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.